just think what it would be like to see Jesus really, really thin, barely any clothing on, trying to carry a cross that he couldn't carry. What do you think he was thinking about when he's hungry and thirsty, tired? His 12 close friends are no longer with him. One said he never even knew him. The other one sold him out for 30 pieces of silver. Do you ever feel like in this life that you feel rejected, alone? That nobody understands what you're going through. The grief, the anguish, the pain, the suffering. The vulnerability. As your eyes are closed, I want to take you back to a garden where we were created. God made man, male and female. And he gave them charge and he said, hey, look, I give you all this. All this beauty, all this wonder. I want a relationship with you. But God is vulnerable. It's not sure what these creations are going to do. So he gave them all of the charge of the garden, and he just said, hey, there's one tree. There, there's one tree, I just want you to, don't go near this tree, because if you go near this tree, it's gonna kind of mess things up. But they saw that the tree was good, their eyes were opened. And they were duped by darkness, by a serpent that loves to whisper untruths. God said, if you touch this tree, you will surely die. No, you won't, said the serpent. You won't die. Did God really say that? Is God really real? Did you two forget your identity? You can become like God. You're not his creation. And the man and the woman were twisted. And they took what was good and pleasing to the eye and they took a bite. She gave it to her husband. And he took a bite. And then they started bickering, they started fighting. They blamed each other, they hid. Then they had kids, and those kids, one kid killed the other kid. And then God kind of steps back and he looks and he says, oh, the propensity of the man is wicked. His heart is evil. There's nothing that seems like there's something that's good in there that I thought I was gonna make. I gotta make this right. I gotta make this right. And so throughout the whole Bible, God, vulnerable, reaches down. But Noah, but Abraham, but Israel. Sort of followed him, but full of wickedness, full of contempt, deceit, misogyny, slavery. More voices, power, greed, lust. I can take what I want. And then the word became flesh. God became man because God is all about love and wants to chase down the ones that turned away. Because the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Because all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. We have all sinned. We have all turned away like sheep. We've done our own thing. We're on different pastures, different places in our life. And all God wants is relationship with you. We are all listening to voices, whether it's media, whether it's phones, whether it's work, whether it's our own thoughts of, am I good enough? 
What's my identity? Did I forget that I was made, that I was God's dream? That I was God's master plan? That he made, him, he made me who I am? But why do I compare myself with everybody else? With how much this person makes? Or what this person's doing? Or what this girl is wearing? Or what this guy is doing? Man, the enemy still says, take your eyes off God. Get your eyes off him. Because we live in a world that's a battle. So when Jesus came to the earth, it said the word became flesh. God became a bod and lived among us. He tabernacled. He kicked it in the neighborhood. He hung out with us. And he got these men and these women and they followed him. And Jesus did all these amazing miracles. But Jesus knew that God was going to heap the entire world of man's sin onto Jesus. Because he that was perfect, he that knew no sin, became sin so that we might become into right standing with God. And that's what Good Friday is all about. There is no worse way to die than crucifixion. The suffix in there is crucifix, excruciate. Okay? You die from body fluids being poured out, your, your lungs, your heart gives out. It is the worst way a human being can possibly die. Because we're reminded that Jesus was a man who suffered. Isaiah the prophet reminds us about what Jesus was going to do. He knew pain firsthand. You ever feel pain? You're right where God is. He feels pain too. He carried our pain, our disfigurements. This is Isaiah 53. It was our sins that ripped him apart, that crushed him and tore him. It was our sin. He took this punishment and made us whole. He was beaten. He was tortured like a lamb led to slaughter. He took it all in silence, beaten bloody for the sins of my people. But this is what God had in mind all along, to crush him with pain. The plan was that he gave himself as an offering for sin. But yet Jesus looked death in the face and he didn't flinch. He embraced the company of the lowest. God wasn't supposed to hang out with sinners, people that didn't have a chance, people that knew pain firsthand, people that were running away people that didn't understand who they were. He took all that. And let me take you to another garden. Check this out. Jesus is wanting his disciples to pray with him. And he's in this garden called Gethsemane. And it says this. Then Jesus went to a garden called Gethsemane. And he told his disciples, stay here with me while I go over and pray. Taking Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he plunged into an agonizing sorrow. And then he said, this sorrow is crushing my life out. Stay here and hold vigil with me. Going a little ahead, he fell on his face praying, my father, if there's any way to get me out of this, but please, not what I want, what do you want? And then he sees his friends and he's like, you guys are still asleep. Can't you just stay awake? And he left a second time. Again, he prayed, my father, there's got to be another way to do this. I don't want to drink this cup, but I'm ready to do it your way. You see, <laughs> Jesus, God in a bod, is struggling. He doesn't want to face the bloody horror of Calvary. But I love the fact, not what I want. What do you want? You see, what Adam and Eve were supposed to do, they messed up. They couldn't do it. As much as they try to think they can do it on their own, they couldn't do it. So Jesus had to go in their place. And he was nailed to a tree. Wood, but a tree. Maybe the imagery is the same tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That the God of the universe picked up where we lacked. He took our sin 
And He's going to keep taking our sin. And the choices that we make and the voices that we listen to and the things that we chase down, whether it's money, education, pride, happiness, the American dream, whatever that is. But Jesus is all about love. He's all about pursuing you, and he will continue to pursue you. And he wants to pursue the people at your work and the people that are in your neighborhood that maybe look and believe different than you. Or people at your school. Or people at the grocery store. He died for them too. Because they are God's dream. Everybody that looks different in your neighborhood, in your soccer team, your baseball team, they're all God's dream. But they're sheep that have gone astray. But God has taken care of their sin too. Because that's what he does. That's what love does. That is love, that he took care of all of our sin. And maybe you're feeling alone today, tonight. You're feeling distant, out of sorts. I think we all are still kind of trying to get back into the swing of what life was like. But I guarantee that we're lonely, that we have some anxiety maybe in our homes. And so tonight what we're going to do is we're going to have an opportunity to take communion. There's a table over here to our left and and to your right. And I want you to know that when Jesus broke bread and poured out the wine, these were with guys that were going to reject him. (laughs) These were with the guys that were going to bail on him when he needed the most. And so, again, vulnerable God wants to break bread with his friends that he knows one is going to sell him out. Another one's going to deny him not once, not two times, but three times. And Jesus, in this most vulnerable time, just wants his friends with him. Because God makes relationship. And salvation is found through relationship. And we, the church are made for relationship, to bring those in our neighborhoods back around to relationship, those on our sports teams, in our workplaces, to remind them that they were made for relationship because not everybody is an island unto themselves. We're a family. And tonight, we get to take communion as family. And so I just want to remind you that as we take the bread and the cup, Jesus, again, being vulnerable, says, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. And the person living next door to you. And the person living behind you. This is my body broken for you. And then he took the cup, thanking God he gave it to them. And he says, drink this. Drink all of this. This is my blood. God's new covenant poured out for many people. For the forgiveness of sin. Jesus is taking care of everything. We just have to respond. That's it. You can't come to church enough. You can't pray enough. You can't can't do it. God did it for you because that's what love does. Love finds a way. And from the moment in the garden, thousands of years ago, God already made a way. I don't know about you, but if I made these creations and they turned their back on me, I'd said, peace out. I, I'm out. Forget it. Right? Prodigal son. You kidding me? It's a great story. I don't know if it's true, but I don't know. I mean, I don't love like that. I do not love like that. But only God is love, and he loves like that because God is love. And he breaks his body, and he sheds his blood because it's you. And for those Roman soldiers that probably flipped him off, and did degrading things to him. The people that walked along the side of the road where there's crucifixion, and they hurled out their insults at Jesus. He forgave their sin too. So the next time I think I'm better than someone, I can't. We're all guilty. We're all guilty because we have sin in our heart. But Jesus took care of it. And tonight when we take communion, and we're going to have some worship, I want you to go, and, and if you're with your family, just, again, be, be safe as we do this. But we're going to create a space. There's going to be some worship. And I just want you guys to, to, to reflect. We've got we to gotta kind of camp here a little bit before we get to all the fun stuff on Easter. Because without Good Friday, Easter doesn't make any sense. 
And just so remember, let's linger here a little bit as, as, as we hear the worship. Let's respond. Um, we're we're going to have some people that are going to be praying after um, we take the communion. If you, wanna, if you want healing, maybe you're grieving something. I know Some of you are still grieving a lost partner or a lost son or a grandchild that has gone astray or a marriage that you don't know is how it's doing. I don't know. But we want to have this safe place for you to come and receive ministry tonight. So, so, Lord, as we pray, as we, Holy Spirit, I just ask, as the band comes up, God, we want to make a space, God, that you are the one that knows our hearts. You're the one that we can't hide from you, Lord. We can't hide from you. There's somebody in here, God, that's struggling. God, I pray tonight we would be able to do business with you. God, some in here feel like they're not good enough for you or they sin too much. Or they're comparing themselves too much or they think they're to be somebody that they're not because they're hearing these voices from media. Lord, hunt us down tonight, even now, even during this this space tonight, God. Holy Spirit, make a pathway. We want to, as a church, take steps towards you to remember, God, that you took care of it. We just need to respond and receive it. You did everything. You broke your body. You gave it away. You hung on a cross. God, put all the sin on you, Jesus. Thank you that you chase us down, that you will continue to chase us down. So let's go ahead and respond. You go ahead and there's tables.